I think it's fair to say and start off this video with the fact that I thought that that game was mental last night. That game was absolutely crazy um, and I haven't felt like um, like excitement, I haven't felt like nervousness at such high levels in the same game. Probably since years ago, I think it was the year uh, where we actually, we, we got to the final, it was actually a semi-final game that did this to me. Um, and we got to the final that year, obviously it was against Real Madrid and we lost uh, the uh, the final that year. But the semi-final, we came up against uh, Roma. Now the first leg of that game, I think we won that one 5-2. I might have referenced it in my preview yesterday. Um, and uh, yeah, and that we, we won the first leg 5-2, but it should have been 5-1. And I think it was a late goal by Roma, took it to 5-2. And you just thought, well, back then we weren't like, you know, how we have been over the last couple of seasons and stuff. We're like good defenders, like or like really good defence and stuff like that anyway. Um, regardless of any of that, like, and then we got to the second leg. And I think the second leg, if I remember rightly, it finished 7-6 on aggregate. We lost the second leg 4-2. I think that's right. Um, and it was very, very close to them equalising. Um, making it 7-7 very, very late on. I think Nyangolan had scored like a long-range goal or something like that, or maybe he was due, he was he was about to and didn't. Um, anyway, this game against Benfica gave me flashbacks to that game. And that's why I was like, you know, some people are raging about it and some people are okay with it because we got there in the end and we've, we've gotten through to the semi-finals and we'll go on to face Villarreal, uh, which will be another tough test. People keep thinking... And thinking wrongly that we have got the easier side of a draw here or there um, and, and stuff like that just because of the names of these teams. But you look at what Benfica could do in the first leg. Like they created problems for us and how we got out of there with a 3-1 victory in the first leg. I think we were quite fortunate. We should have maybe scored some more ourselves. But it is what it is. We got out of there 3-1. And while we're in a bit of a comfortable situation, you would think... In my mind, I look at it like the pressure and the the way that they were able to get in and behind us. It, 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 it was a worry. It really was a worry. When that team lineup came out last night as well, I was a bit like, hmm, I'm not as confident as I was. And that's no disrespect to the players that were, that were playing. But when you take out a lot of first teamers, and I understand it, we've got the you know we've got the FA Cup semi final against Man City on Saturday. Yes, we have that coming up. That's absolutely fine. No worries. I understood that there was going to be some rotation. I expected it to be more rotation in the front line, which there was, um, and the midfield, which again there was, but not so much the defence, which there was. And like credit to Simicas, probably the best player in. That back line, um, you know, Konate obviously scored a couple of goals as well. Like, um, it was a couple of goals, wasn't it? Or was it not? I'm pretty sure it was. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was the one goal, but he scored a couple of goals over two legs. Um, Bobby Firmino for the next two goals as well. Look, it, it, it was one of them when I just thought, like, there's enough quality in the team that we can do well, but we had problems with our starting defenders against Benfica. I just thought they were going to cause us problems, um, issues, and inevitably they did. You know, they did cause us problems. Um, and I tell you now, straight away, after both legs, I don't know what the player's character is like, and maybe someone could tell me what he's like. And I th you probably know who I'm going to say already. He's put himself quite near the top of my shopping list if I was to have one for the summer. And that is Darwin Nunes. Because that lad is just electric in every sense of the word he's absolutely electric he's dynamic and you know what i don't actually know how old he is and i just want to have a quick look now um and see can i see how old this player is player details he's 22 excuse me 22 years old and i think he's scored something like 32 goals or something this season um let me just think i think this is just champions league stats and Champions League, just in the Champions League, he scored six goals. And I want to have a look and see if I can have a look in their um, division. What is their division? I can't actually remember. That's 2019. Never mind. I might not get it in here. But um, 
Oh yeah, here we are. And 24 goals in 24 appearances in um, in his league. It's impressive. And people can say stuff about the Portuguese league all they want. We've just bought Luis Diaz from there as well. Just and, you know, keep that in recent memory and how good and how fantastic we, we find um, Luis Diaz to be. And he is. He's a fine player. He's a brilliant player. I would love someone like a Darwin Nunes as an option up front, as maybe someone that could, you know, transform and, and morph and uh, evolve our attack into the future. Obviously, because we're not going to be looking at Bobby Firmino and such like that for, um, you know, for the future, for, for like many more years to come. Firmino still got a role to play. He showed that last night. We're getting the goals that he scored, but he's not going to be there for the next three, four, five years. Whereas someone like a Darwin Nunes, who has been linked to many different clubs. I think in the Premier League, most notably, he's been linked to Man City, uh, sorry, Man United and Arsenal. I would hate for those clubs to get a guy like this who performed against us very, very well. He did. He performed against us very, very well. And let me be honest with you as well. The two performances that I've seen him play were both against us. I haven't seen him play in the Portuguese League or, and, and, or any other competition that he might be in or any other teams he's played against. But he's really caught my eye big time, and uh, maybe I'm late to the late to the game. But I don't want to get, you know, hyped up and stuff like that on statistics and stuff about a player just because people are talking about him. Seeing a player with your own eyes just makes the difference. And for me, at the age of 22, he passes the eye test. Um, and I would love Liverpool to be in there. Apparently, he's looking to be leaving in the summer and stuff like that. Anyway, but we move on. Look, look, we look at. We can look at statistics and stuff like that all night long. The main thing that happens for Liverpool from here is that we do go through to the semi-finals. We did manage to get the, the result, the 6-4 on aggregate result. We drew the game 3-3. Um, we had a goal ruled out late on. They had a goal ruled out late on, which could have taken it to 4-3 for either team and made it 6-5, whichever way, on aggregate as well. But the main thing for us is that we are going through. And that is a massive positive. Going through to the semi-finals of this competition I would have I would have took semi-finals like at the start of the season someone said you get through the semi-finals you don't go any further look you, you want to take it you absolutely want to take it of course you want to get to the finals everybody wants to get to the finals but it's not just a straight route to the final it's not going to be easy we're going to come up against Villarreal um, who I mean they knocked out Bayern Munich like that's no mean feat I know Pete, like Bayern Munich fans um, really don't have a great opinion of uh, Nagelsmann or Nagelsmann, however you say his name, the manager. Uh, used to be RB Leipzig's manager and used to get a lot of plaudits there. But there's a, lot, a different pressure when you're at a team like uh, Bayern Munich who expect to win everything and be competitive on all fronts. And they just they, they got knocked out by um, Unai Emery, who I have a lot of respect for. Um, he's, a, he's a successful manager in Europe, one of the most successful managers in terms of the Europa League as well. And like I think winning the Europa League, apparently from what I've heard, that was the first trophy that um, Villarreal have won in their history, or or maybe that's recent history. I'm not entirely sure, but that's massive, you know. And he's doing big things for that club. Maybe not in terms of league position for them, but he's doing really well for them, and he does really well in Europe. Like so, it's not going to be a walk in the park for anybody to come up against Villarreal. So. Maybe do I respect them too much? I can't really say that I do too much because I haven't actually seen them play with my own eyes apart from when they played against Man United in the group stage. Just It was a game that was on. I watched it. Um, but yeah, like it's going to be difficult. Obviously, we hope to get to the final. If we get to the final, then it's going to be between Manchester City and Real Madrid. That's too far ahead to be looking. It's far too far ahead and nothing that we should be concerning ourselves with at the moment. But we're through to the next round. As far as I can tell, we got through it without any injuries, from what I can tell, from what I can remember. Um, so, you look, we, we've got the FA Cup semi-final to look forward to at the weekend as well against another tough opponent in Manchester City. It's going to be tough. Are we going to win it? Look, I'll do a preview on Friday, tomorrow. I'll do a preview then because I've actually got the day off work. So, why not? Might as well do it then. But yeah, I'm happy for the guys. I'm happy for the players that played um, as well. The guys that actually got uh, minutes. Um, but yeah, Simicast was the one that stood out for me. Simicast was his delivery 
was just fantastic. He's, he, he was very, very dynamic on the left-hand side and really does prove himself to be someone that can compete with, um, or at least be a very, very, very good backup to Andy Robertson as well. Affording those guys a good amount of rest as well was very good. Special mention to Joe Gomez. I actually thought he did well um, at right back as well. Very, very good option. Someone that I hope that we keep hold of because he can cover as centre back. Obviously, it's his main position. It's where he's won trophies from as well. Um, when he's not been, you know, when he's been fully fit, fully in the uh, the groove of playing. Um, but yeah, he'd be someone that like he doesn't do the job that Trent does. But he does a very good job at right back in a difficult, you know, system to play. Getting higher up the pitch and even having a good shot last night. That was quite impressive to see as well. Um, but yeah, very impressive from some players. Obviously, the way we obviously seem to take our foot off the gas. And really, we just didn't expect, we just didn't seem to expect that Benfica were going to keep pressing us so, so much. Like, it was literally constant pressure. Like, all, like, from like the last 10 minutes, I was actually just like, can we please have the final whistle? Because like this is this is this is ridiculous. Like I'm literally, I was literally just going like I I I want the final whistle to go. And then when they scored and it went offside, but I didn't know it went offside at the time. I was like, what's going to happen? Because this is just I can't deal with this. Can we just have the final whistle, please? Anyway, um, commiserations to Benfica. They were very difficult to play against. Really difficult to play against. But if anything, and obviously if you're not a Liverpool fan, or even if you are a Liverpool fan. It were two exciting games, two really exciting games to watch. Um, not exciting to enjoy it, like especially the second leg because of the way it went. For if you're a Liverpool fan, but I imagine neutrals will have loved watching that game over watching what I heard was complete garbage between Atletico Madrid and Man City, and it wasn't down to Man City, it was down to Diego Simeone's Atletic Atletico Madrid. I'm not even going to comment any further on that because they don't they. No, they just don't deserve the comments anyway. But that's it for us um, uh, for today. I'm going to do your preview for uh, the FA Cup semi-final as well. That'll be coming out tomorrow at some point. It'll be, probably be a little bit later on in the day, but we'll see how it goes anyway. Um, and then fingers crossed, maybe on Sunday, you know, we can have a hopefully a good, a good or maybe even later on on Saturday, hopefully a good news. Um, video but we'll just have to take it as it comes won't we anyway i'm gonna get out of here gonna go make some food and uh, i hope you guys are doing well hope you're taking care of yourselves and i wish you the very best indeed if you have enjoyed this video please do feel free to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new around here thank you once again do take care and i'll catch you later